These are the two colors that I'm going to be using um, to make the the pine, the faux wood grain pine. And um, the reason why I have this color is that I was trying to replicate the ecru that we were going to use for the ivory. And I did my ratios, and it came out hella yellow. I said, oh, that's not supposed to happen. So I did it twice. So I have like two batches of hella yellow. So I said, okay, well, what can we do? And so I was talking to Carl, and he said, well, that's kind of nice. It's kind of nice mustard color. And then I thought, I'm gonna, I wanted to do wood grain anyway. And pine is a light yellow like this and then it has a brown. So I added some brown to the hella yellow. <laughs> I'm gonna call that, that's what I'm gonna call this, hella yellow. And um, so we're gonna do a quick wood grain review. I start out, I start out wood grain by making bullseyes. And a bullseye is just a snake of one color surrounded by a sheet of another color. And remember when you're when you're covering anything with a sheet, roll it over till it touches the other side and it makes a mark. See that mark? Will be see that mark? cut on the inside of that mark. And if the mark isn't straight, that's because the clay wasn't straight. You cut on the inside of the mark because that will take into consideration how thick the clay was. And if we did this right, we should have a flush seam. Well, with a little pinch, we do. If we had an overlap, it would show in the design. It'll it'll show an overlap. We want a flush seam. So then we take the next we take the alternate color and we do the same thing. Now if we did this like over and over and over and over color one, color two, color one, color two, then we'd have what looks like a a cross section of a tree trunk because that's how trees grow. There's the dry season and the wet season and they have different colors and that's how they can tell the age of a tree how many rings there are. I grew up in California so I'm used to redwoods and I'm used to redwoods being so tall and so old. Some of the redwoods in the John Muir Park, State Park, they were around since the, this is not wide enough, they were around since the days of Christ. You know, they're like 2,000 years old. Being a Californian, I thought that's how it is everywhere. And then, to my utter shock, when I was going to Yellowstone Park, I saw all these trees, lodgepole pines, skinny and fallen over like a, you know, like every few trees, one was fallen over. And I, I was distressed and I went, I turned to my husband, my, that was my first husband, and I said, what's wrong with these trees? They're all falling over. And he says, well, these trees don't live but 10 years and then they fall over. And that's why they used them for log cabins and teepees. And I thought, <gasps> And I thought to myself, I wasn't going to say anything. I thought to myself, oh my God. I thought trees, all trees lived for thousands of years and grew to be 
monstrous tall. See? That's what happens. You don't get out enough. Okay, so we have... Oh, I guess. Let's just cut it. See what we got. Okay. So we have... A bit of a bullseye there. My little holder that was holding my camera decided to, like, take a break. Okay. So I'm going to elongate this because I'm going to bury it in sheets of clay, just like we did our leopard spots, okay? And so we'll have, you know, I recycle these like year after year after year. Don't throw these away. You can always use them again. No use buying, no use buying them new if you can reuse them. Because, you know, what's our motto? Reduce, reuse, recycle. That's it. Okay. So. I'm going to put these. I'm going to put these two ribbons together. Like that. Brown on one side, yellow on the other. And I'm going to bury our little bullseye in, in the ribbons. And we're not worrying about being terribly exact or anything. Let's get some wood grain separation there. And then we'll put in another one. Is she doing? Okay. Sorry for the shaky cam. Okay. Fist of Doom. Err. Err. Like this. Okay. And I'm going to reduce it by pulling it. And let me. Let me cut the end so you can just sort of see see what we did so far. We did this so far. Okay. Cut off the other end just to be fair. Okay. And then let's see. That's about half. Let's change it up a little bit and I'm going to squeeze the burls the burls and the cane squeeze the burls for the boys and girls okay okay this And this is what we do to get wood cane, wood grain. Now we can slice it like that. 
Now this looks like it could be reduced a little more, huh? To get a finer line. So we just reduce it some more. That's about half. Then we can stack it. And see, you can cut it from this side and it looks wood grainy. Okay, let's, in fact, let's give it a slice from this side just for grins. Okay, let's press it. We got some like, so we got wood grain from that angle. And see, we just turned it. And we got wood grain from this angle. Give it a press. And there you go. And I'm going to use this to cover a pen because this is all part of the um, preparation for the City of Clay pen swap for f uh, that's starting. Um, the sign-up is in February 2013, and that'll be the next section of the the next section of the video.